everybody, and welcome back to World of Tanks Bootcamp with Sethica. Now on this episode, I'm going to be showing you another replay in a light tank, the MX-12T, a French tier 6 light tank. You, lately, I've been having a lot of fun in these light tanks. As I said before, they are not something I used to play, so I don't have that much experience in them, and I don't have any uh, really high tier of them. Actually, this is uh, this, and the WZ-131 and the MT-25 is the highest tiers I've got. But, I gotta say, I am enjoying them a lot. I don't know really what it is. I think it's the combination of the very high mobility and, not to be underestimated, a lot of them are actually capable of doing quite a bit of damage against the right kind of tanks. Now, we are here on Erlenberg where we all know funny things happen from time to time, right? And I'm going to be moving up here because I want to spot for my team who appears to be for willing to take this flank quite heavily. I'm going to be trying to spot them. Spot the enemy and maybe get a few bit of damage in. But you always need to consider what kind of engagement you take because the later in the game that you're alive, usually the more impact you can really do. So we're seeing here that there's not really a lot of tanks moving over to us. Now this martyr is a very small tank and he's going to have a very bad day. And now I'm quite worried that I've been spotted, so I'm not going to be showing myself. It's always a bit of an, an issue if you've been spotted, because people down there can hit you. And what you saw there, that one shot is really just showing how not used to this position I am. Because I did not know where the buildings were. The more you get to know a map, and the more you get to know what, where you can take shots and where you cannot, the better you're going to do. Logically, right? What kind of shots you can take. That was a bit... Well, this is not going well for me apparently, but since he's a tank destroyer, I'm going to be moving this way and hopefully simply shoot him. And I'm going to be focusing on tracking him since, well, that's the best bet I had of killing him. I was probably not going to do a lot of damage to him, so tracking him so he couldn't do anything to me is probably the best choice. Now, we've not done a lot of damage yet, but this SU-152, even though it can one-hit me, cannot see me at the moment. Or, at least he's not in a position where he can really detect me, and these guys over here cannot no are not noticing me. So, I just saw him fire and kill this E-25 in a spectacular fashion, right? So, my goal in that position would be to try and get into... Uh, in behind him. Of course, that was not an issue since he simply died. And I am noticing that this guy is turning, so I want to get as many shots as I can in on him. There was only two, sadly. So I'll take a reload because it's unlikely that I'm going to be showing myself to him and trying to take shots right at this moment. However, I need to may be careful to to keep myself be behind hard cover from him. And hopefully this type T34 T is going to allow me to take a few shots at him. Here we have another Yak Panther over here. He apparently has not noticed me. That's really too bad for him. Now if he had noticed me, what I would have to do Let's take a moment to look at this, right? I know that there's a... Oh man, this map is getting on my nerves. I know that there's a guy over here, right? If he had noticed me, where could I really go by now? There's a guy... Uh, there's an enemy Yak Panther right over here. And there's an enemy Yak Panther right over here. So... I would probably have to try and uh, camp right up around this house. However, this would not really be so good, right? So, what is my best bet? My best bet right now is to keep this guy tracked. I do not 
want him to turn around and try and kill me because I, there's nowhere for me to go if I move backwards while spotted this guy over here is without a doubt going to put a giant shot right through my French ass and since I cannot really hide right here since this guy would seem to be able to move over here and then shoot at me with impunity I need him to die. I need him to die fast and I need him to die right now. And luckily for me this is also in a position where I can actually penetrate him. So I got a bit of damage in there and now we're out of ammo. Since I've been reloading a bit unevenly I got one shell left of normal ammo and 12 ABCR. Of course this is going to be a bit more expensive so that's not so nice here I'm always going to try and keep myself behind hard cover from this jack panther and it is Pierce he shot he's just shot I need to track him and I need to get behind him and just stay here because then he's dead this little AMX 12T is capable of dishing out an average of Let's see, he has six shells, so that's an average of... Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's an average of 800 damage, right? That's actually enough to take out a Yak Panther, if you're behind them. That's what I mean about these little light tanks being able to actually do quite a bit of damage. Now, they don't have a lot of penetration, usually. Well, that's actually not true but they're usually mounted on a tank that is quite capable of simply being one shot or similarly dying very very early. But if you can survive to the late game you can simply wreck enemy tanks such as going as is going to be happening to this SU-100M1. However, he is quite capable of killing me very easily. So what I need to do is try and use my mobility to keep myself in a position where he cannot shoot at me and then track him in a position where my friends can help me kill him. This is usually what you need to do in a light tank. You need to... well, of course this is the entire pur purpose of the light tank, right? The purpose is that you want to support your friends. Now let's move on to the post-game stats. And here we are. So, this was a first class mastery badge. I earned 38,392 credits gross, 3,354 experience earned with a two times victory. As we can see here, I was by far the one who earned the most experience on both teams, but I was third in damage with the KB3 and the Yak Pan one of the Yak Panthers on the enemy team doing more damage than me. And finally, we can see here that I earned a measly 13,173 credits net, and I only did 876 spotting damage. Well, assistance damage. Which is actually a bit surprising now that I think about it, because I did aim to get mm, a lot of uh, track. I earn uh, I aimed the tracks a lot in this game. That And that's really what I find that I need to do a lot, especially in a, such a lightly armored tank such as the AMX. Well, any light tank really. If you can, then you need to track the enemy and get your team to help you take them down, at least if they're in a disadvantageous position for you. Now, for example, that Yak pa the first Yak Panther the one who was going to be flanking me if I did not take care of him. Had he noticed me and simply shot at me, I would have died very easily. He could have, instead of moving out in the open, he could have simply stayed behind that house that he was right next to, keeping himself in, from, in cover from whatever was shooting at him, and being able to kill me with ease. However, he didn't, and that's really something that you you can't really count on. My goal, once I had taken that stupid damage from that SU-144, or 122, I can't really remember, 
is the goal when you have so little health, you need to be bait, basically. A lot of the time, that's the best thing you can do. Keep yourself in as heavy cover as possible, as I did with that, with the second Yak Panther. And simply wait for your team to help you. In a lot of positions, at least when you're in a tank that can't carry a game, or can't take a lot of damage. If I, if I was in a Tiger 2, this would have been an entirely different situation since I, since I would have simply been able to side scrape him and probably not take a lot of damage doing it. But in a tank as the AM, such as the AMX-12T, any shot into me is probably going to do damage. Any bounce is more luck than it is anything else and so I need to be very very careful. Now that Yak Pan, the second Yak Panther the one where I wanted to get behind him. Even if I hadn't killed him, even if he hadn't been killed, when I tracked him, he was already dead. I had simply delayed the battle in long enough that my team had catched up with my much superior speed, which is something you also need to take care of when you're in a light tank. When you're in a light tank, you are so fast that Mo in most cases you're going to be there way before your friends. Now a lot of light tanks admittedly use this to simply suicide into whatever is around, right? But this is this is silly. This is a waste of your potential. If you can survive to the end of the match you can get into positions where you can take out entire tanks. This is admittedly a bit more tricky when you're in a tank that has an auto loader since you can't keep an enemy tracked forever, and if they cannot, if they are not going to be dying from a single, uh, from a single rack of um, shells, six shells before you need to, six shells in this AMX 12T before you need to make a long reload. Why can I not remember the word for this? Oh well, before if you cannot kill them before a long reload, you're probably fucked, or you need to keep yourself behind the enemy in case it's a uh, tank destroyer at least and simply try and stay away from the from their uh, from their gun but this is not always something you can do if they are if there's hard cover near you they can simply go up against that and use that to simply force you into their firing arc and then you're fucked and if they have a turret then you're fucked either way unless you're in an ELC and <laughs> are simply so small that they can't hit you anyway, right? The basic instinctual thing you need to memorize is you do not want to go out and suicide. And if you make a mistake in the early game where you have, as I did with that SU, where I, I was willing to take the damage which I probably didn't need to really. I could just have waited for my friends to come and swarm him. I didn't need to go around there and take that much damage and I didn't need to get rammed by him. But I did. Silly silly of me, right? And when you've got so little health left that you're a one-shot kill from anything you encounter, many people might think that they are basically out of the game. But this is simply not so. You are perfect bait. Many, pe many tanks are going to focus on you since you've got so low health and so if you can either tank very effectively or put yourself in a position where they can't shoot at you but they will still try to go for you since your gun is, eff as is, is as effective at 1% health as it is as at 100% health and so it's always in their interest to try and take you out plus people are greedy you are going to be helping out your team a lot more than you actually realize. And this is something that is crucial in a light tank. Wait, try and survive as long as possible and you'll get into marvelous positions where you can simply abuse the enemy with your much faster speed. At least in my opinion. Now this has been a bit long, so I hope you enjoyed and I hope I'll see you back tomorrow for more World of Tanks or some other day maybe. Please remember to vote, comment and subscribe and have a nice evening.